Well, we've seen uh, Israeli ministers uh, arriving uh, in Dubai for different sort of conferences and sporting events. We saw Miri Regev the, there, we saw Israel mm -hmm. Katz, we saw uh, other ministers with regards to anything from uh, industry and commerce to a, a World Bank uh, event and then, of course, to sporting. The relations started um, to, to roll out around 2002, around the Arab Initiative that called for a normalization of the entire Arab world with Israel in return for a peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. What the UAE did now is considered a betrayal of that mm. agreement, of course, in the eyes of the Palestinians and others who advocate for the Palestinian cause and say, hey, we lost our biggest card. You're normalizing the relationship without that. We've seen around 300 or so companies from Israel operating already in the UAE in the last few years. They were not doing it directly, and I'm sure Yair can speak uh, more about that. It was an indirect relationship. Relationships. There were any deals in anything from uh, investment banking to acquisitions and mergers and then even to uh, security industries. It was just an agreement the last uh, month that was signed with uh, Rafael, the Israeli uh, arms manufacturer. Uh, so there have been relationships in 2019 towards the end of the year. Dubai already announced that it would even allow Israelis to come and visit the expo that was to, supposed to take place there in 2020. It was postponed to 2021. And after that, it didn't mean to take back the right of uh, uh, entry from Israeli. So the relations were very much normalized already. This was very much uh, an announcement of coming out of the closet with these mm -hmm. relationship and really making uh, a remarkable uh, and very important declaration just ahead of the November elections in the U.S. Absolutely. And Jair, how do we... Uh how does Israel benefit from this particular relationship from with the UAE, not just the Arab world, it just be, not just because it's part of the Arab world, but between Israel and the UAE, what are the direct benefits for either side of the parties here? So there are there are huge uh, benefits for Israel and for the UAE, by the way. So the UAE is uh, basically the first adopter of technologies in the Arab world. It's the most Western uh, uh, country there. Uh, huge uh, millennial generation uh, adoption of smartphones and internet uh, are the highest in the world. E-commerce is, is growing significantly. You know, Uber just purchased a company called Kareem mm -hmm. in uh, January for $3 billion. Uh, they have Souk acquired by Amazon. Uh, Noon, which is a huge e-commerce company. So I think now that Israeli companies, as Ariel mentioned, uh, uh, can actually come in the market and, and get more involved and compete and join forces and cooperate. It, it's a huge, huge achievement and, 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 and great, uh, could be a great success story. I would also add uh, that what you may see now, and I've been involved in that in the last two years or so, uh, you are going to see venture capital coming from the UAE to Israeli companies directly and to the Israeli funds. In what industry are we going to be seeing this most likely? So, you know, uh, people like to talk about a lot about the agro technology and water treatment and all those areas. Uh, I am frankly more interested in the core businesses of the Israeli tech, right, which is uh, cybersecurity, uh, e-commerce, anti-fraud, uh, digital health, um, et cetera, et cetera, management, tool management, et cetera, anything that is online, right? Uh, and that's what's happening now in the UAE, and I think that the Israeli companies Companies moving there are going to see great success.